the order, uh, the Monterey Peninsula Water Management District Water Demand Committee meeting on Thursday, August the 6th at 3.01 p.m. Roll call, please. Uh, Director Riley. Here. Director Hoffman. He's muted right now. Yeah, I, I will try and mute him. Hopefully we won't be doing it at the same time. You did, you did at the same but, time. Gary, I'll let you mute yourself. Or unmute. I mean, unmute yourself. All right, um, Director Hoffman, are you present? I wonder if his microphone is working. It looks like it's on. Gary, can you hear us? Director Hoffman. All right, and Director Edwards. Uh, here. Okay. So. Director uh, Hoffman. Are you present? Okay. Yeah, Director Hoffman's microphone shows it open, but not seeing any acknowledgement. There we go. Oh, ah, yeah. Director Hoffman, excellent. All present. Um, I, I can hear you now, Gary. Yeah, no, uh, I dish, initially I did not, but I was just working on the settings and I don't know what, but you can hear me now. Mm -hmm. I can hear you, Director Hoffman. Can you hear me? I, I can't like, hear Alvin. Um, okay, I just hung up on you. Okay, we just take a roll call now, Director Hoffman. Yes, and Director Hoffman had indicated that he is present. So I see a unanimous um, presence of the committee. All three committee members are here. Thank you, Arlene. Okay, yeah. we're going to go comment from the public. The public may comment on any item within the district jurisdiction. Please limit your comments to three minutes in length. This is oral communication. Um, now, I see. I see one raised hand. Just a moment. Yeah, I don't know what uh, I was hearing you guys a minute ago, and then all of a sudden not. Yeah, I can hear you, Director Hoffman. Yes. Yes. Just to Mr. the uh, Mr. Tilly, please present your comment. But um, earlier, just a minute, a second ago, it was coming through, so I don't know what happened. You, you're still coming through, Director Hoffman. We're doing a public comment for oral communications. Mr. Tilly, I'm going to unmute you. Okay. 
trouble doing that. Let's try this right away. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tilly, are you able to unmute yourself? Hey, Arlene. Yes. We're still trying to troubleshoot Director Hoffman's sound. Okay, um, let me unmute him. I know we were able to hear him. He's um... unmuted you. So, Gary, can you hear through your um, computer? So it sounds like you can't hear us through your computer right now. Correct. Um, there's a little three three dot um, control. Um, that it. What kind of machine are you on, by the way? Uh, HP. It's a Microsoft. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Like yeah. So. Like yeah. So there's in the controls area. Um, of WebEx controls, there is an audio devices um, button. So if you open the the one that uh, has ch change audio connection, that the audio devices, it there could be a volume control for your for this meeting there. So like in my case, it opens up and says iPad, and it's got a volume bar at the bottom. So you can internally within this WebEx uh, control uh, your your volume setting. Um, okay, so a mic WebEx control with audio connection, speaker, microphone, and uh, volume output. Is it maxed? It's medium. medium. Hmm. Uh, uh, Gary, I can hear you. Turn your phone off. Well, I think you're hearing him through my phone, through my connection. Let me uh, hang on. If I if I mute, yeah, um, this is me talking. I can still hear you, uh, Director Hoffman. I'm not the WebEx. Yes, through the WebEx. Yes. Turn your phone off and try it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I can still hear you. Okay, now you're coming through. Okay. We got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay. And we were in oral communication. I think you had Mr. John Tilly on the, on the line, Arlene. Yes. Um, John, I will attempt to unmute your microphone so that you can pre-comment. There we go. All right, Mr. Tilly, please present your comment. Mr. Tilly, did you want to present a comment? I I have unmuted your microphone. I see your hand raised. Okay, we're gonna move along then. All communications are anybody else out there, Arlene? No, there was just the one raised hand. Thank you. Okay, or communications is closed. Okay, first action, uh, action item. Consider adoption of July 2nd, 2020, committee meeting minutes. Arlene, you need to mute John. There we go. I move approval. Approval. Do I have a second out there? I will second. Okay. Uh, 
Motion made by Director Raleigh, second by Director Hoffman. Uh, any public comment on this? I see no hands raised. Thank you. We'll have a roll call vote, please. Director Hoffman? Yes. Director Riley? Aye. And Director Edwards? Aye. Uh, unanimous approval. Motion carried 3 0. Next item, we're going to discussion items. Public comment will be received. Update on water for near term housing needs initiative. General manager. Yes, this is uh, the one that Arlene's going to pull up the uh, presentation to the policy advisory committee from. Uh, I guess was that just yesterday? Yes, we're yes. all blurring together. <laughs> um, and it includes material that this committee has heard before. Um, so we'll go through rather quickly, but I just want to highlight a few of the, the things that we talked about. So Arlene, when you get the chance. So the policy advisory committee was attended uh, fairly, fairly good attendance, including the airport district, uh, Marianne Leffels, but uh, I can't recall one of the cities was underrepresented, um, unrepresented. Stephanie, city of recall? Seaside. Seaside, that's yeah. right. Seaside and uh, City of San 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 City. Yes, thank you. Um, so we walked the committee through what uh, the history had been. So uh, next slide, Arlene. Starting with the um, <clears throat> the the events that have occurred here at the district including the first board presentation a year ago, and then the water demand committee, the homework that we assigned to the TAC uh, and so forth. And so um, this was an opportunity for the policy setters to better understand what their staff had been doing in conjunction with us previously. And to, um, I don't wanna say speak now or forever hold your peace, but a little bit of that. And um, so next slide. Um, so we covered the condition two of the cease and desist order and why that presents a problem. Next slide. How the garden road uh, consideration of an additional allocation attracted the attention of the state water board uh, because of the uh, language in condition two that uh, looks at changes in zoning, changes in use, and increases in use, um, which uh, we affectionately referred to as Garden Road, uh, achieved the trifecta on all of those. Next slide. We identified what the concerns the state board raised over the Garden Road and how those are applicable to all of our housing concerns. Next slide. and uh, reiterated that the moratorium itself established by the PUC does allow discrimination in treatment of similar services due to the, the requirements of Order 9510 and the 2009 CDO. So in other words, where normally the Public Utilities Commission would not allow you to uh, discriminate against two like uh, connections, they recognize that an increase in use at an existing service connection could be treated differently than an entity that is not uh, creating an increase in use. Next slide. Then we introduced Senate Bill 330, the uh, Housing Crisis Act of 2019. And uh, next slide. And uh, identified what SB 330 does and uh, basically identifies the need for affordable and moderate housing as a uh, health and safety issue and also makes it uh, uh, unlawful to pass any sort of moratorium or similar restriction on housing development. Um, we talked about how some of the planners view the cease and desist order as a moratorium on housing that shouldn't be allowed under SB 330. 
Uh, next slide, but I pointed out to the, the crowd that uh, SB 330 specifically does recognize that cities can disapprove housing where there's an inadequate water or wastewater uh, facilities to serve the project. So it was written into the code, which seems to indicate to us that the uh, SB 330, notwithstanding that the CDO would still control and uh, could control and therefore all roads head through the state water resources control board. Next slide. We identified that the CDO itself does recognize that you can petition for relief if there's a health and safety issue. And we further recognize that the April guidance letter from Barbara Evoy, their then deputy director of water rights, uh, did not say that that exemption or that relief was limited only to the reductions. Uh, she seemed to open the door that the intent was uh, anything within the CDO that affects health and safety. Next slide. So now I want to just go straight to the second to last slide, Arlene, if you could. Let's tell them to stop. Yeah. <clears throat> One, yeah, uh, second, go back one. So we walked them through the, the, the homework that the TAC members had been asked to do, um, how we uh, took those results and then added in some of the underrepresented uh, entities like Naval Post Graduate School, Presidio of Monterey, the school districts. And we then looked at allocation of uh, an amount of water based on population, based on RENA, uh, the, the regional housing needs allocation assessment, and what the various types of weighting resulted in. We um, reiterated that our goal as the water district is to not over ask. Um, and so we, we arrived at a number of about 75 acre feet as a reasonable de minimis ask. And that's what we told the collective group is what we wanted to take forward. We naturally received some pushback from the city of Pacific Grove, the city of Carmel, and then uh, via email, the city of Delray Oaks, believing that um, in, in the case of Carmel and Delray Oaks, that they were under allotted in our uh, proposal here and that Pacific Grove was also uh, uh, under allotted relative to their request. And so we've promised to get back to Carmel and the city of Pacific Grove. Um, Delray Oaks will respond to their email, but they in effect have asked for just over 10 acre feet. But what the, the way they've calculated it is as if 100% of their uh, round four and round five arena targets would be met in this uh, two and a half to three and a half year process, which is just a, uh, a physical and functional impossibility. Um, they didn't even use up their Peralta allocation for, you know, it took them 20 years to do so. So th there's no way that they could do uh, 57 housing units or whatever the number is in a uh, very short time when they haven't done them in the past uh, number of years. And there's a little bit of the same thing in Carmel and a little bit of the same thing in Pacific Grove's uh, initial request um, exceeding really the, the reality of what they could get done. But we promised to come back and revisit the allocations um, but I don't believe we want to revisit the 75 total acre feet. So our goal now at this point with the uh, policy advisory committee in effect signing off on the 75 acre feet is to uh, now uh, make contact with the state housing and community development people. Uh, We've already had some <clears throat> feedback and an offer of help from the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership Housing Subgroup 
to assist in uh, putting a coalition together. Um, next slide. Um, so here during the month of August, and uh, you know, it's probably going to be not late August, but more likely early September, that will formally go to the state water board. Um, we will ask for uh, letters of support from the jurisdictions. We will ask for letters of support from several non governmental uh, organizations like land watch. Um, uh, Monterey Bay economic partnership United way and so forth. Um, as I said, uh, Monterey Bay economic partnership has uh, reached out to help with that coalition. We did request that the uh, of the PAC members that they assign one or two of their staff uh, to join in any of our meetings. So likely uh, either Kim or Andy from uh, City of Monterey will be uh, tasked and possibly uh, either uh, Kurt Overmeyer or somebody from the City of Seaside or anyone else who's interested in, in being part of this effort. Um, next slide, Arlene. So that's what I was just speaking to as a coalition of supporters. Um, our, our real goal is to get the housing and community development folks to be a supporter and then to uh, then head over to the state water board and see what uh, can be developed. What we're asking at the full board meeting on August 17th is to uh, have the full board uh, approve moving forward in this in this fashion. So with that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Stephanie can. Uh, Stephanie's been in contact with the county over its numbers. Um, she received the email from Delray Oaks and reviewed some of their assumptions. But uh, either of us are ready to take questions. Hey. All right, uh, committee members, any questions? I have a few questions. Go ahead there, Director Rowley. Um, I was, um, I listened to the uh, city policy uh, committee discussion yesterday, and um, I had two questions about, well, I'm, I want to focus on the 75 um, and, uh, the, and the jurisdictions that obviously want more. But I want to I want to compare the 75 to a partial approval and then maintaining district flexibility for the balance. I haven't tried to make a cut in my mind on that. But does does would that approach uh, be uh, a strategically um, way a strategic strategic way to try to get our foot in the door with the uh, with the uh, state water board? Yeah, the the reason we kind of capped it at 75 is it's approximately 2% of the total savings since the CDO was issued, or so the reduction in pumping off the river, um, or the reduction actually in overall uh, consumption uh, as measured by production. Um, it just basically bringing forth the argument that it is a very small sliver, a de minimis amount, you know, using our Latin. Um, it's also driven by um, managing expectations. It's, you know, we're, we're 30 months away from a permanent water supply. So, you know, give or take. The amount of housing that can actually be developed, you know, designed, moved forward and built in that period of time is not that much. And 75 acre feet would go a very, very long way. I just, I think people don't really understand that, that that, that is a lot of water for a very short period of time. We haven't seen um, that kind of development, even, you know, pre CDO. So pre 2009, Yes, water was scarce in some of the communities, especially Pacific Grove as an example. But recall that all water usage in that 
pre-2009 period where there was still allocation available pre-Peralta, almost everybody had some water, it was about 16 acre feet a year. So, you know, 75 acre feet is approximately five years worth of, of that kind of market absorption. And that's including commercial demand, uh, market rate housing demand and so forth. So if, if what we're really looking at here is primarily affordable, um, either 100% affordable, which would be great, uh, but that's the hardest kind to actually develop, or the affordable set aside in a one in five or one in four unit setting, um, again, this water will go a very, very long way. And if we really got tapped out early, um, at that point in time, you're in the middle of building a permanent water supply. Um, the district could certainly with, uh, within reason, and uh, Mayor Potter brought this up on the call, go ahead and establish an allocation against the new plant coming online in eight months, 12 months, or what have you. So um, I just think the 75 is a real workable number from the standpoint of demonstrating how it's not that big of a of a cut to the to the river uh to the resources but could have a major impact on the uh the housing needs the other the other question i have from yesterday's uh, meeting was uh carmel and um civic grove were complaining that they the allocation numbers were too low yeah. um i'm, I'm just I'm just wondering how far down the road would we expect? I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is more of an opinion uh, that um, I don't think we should keep going down that road over and over and over and over again. They've been asked a number of times to submit their doc documentation. Uh, some of the documentation is pretty scratchy as far as I'm concerned. And Monterey is the only one that took it seriously and put uh, the addresses down, you know, locations and very specific plans that they have going forward. And just right. because the jurisdiction complains that their allocation number does, isn't very high, doesn't doesn't lend any credence to the fact that anything's in motion in in those jurisdictions. So I'm I'm just encouraging the the district to maybe just be hard hard on this, uh, push ahead, um, and uh, and then uh, but we, we still have flexibility. So it's not like everything's written in concrete this round. Well, and in fact, uh, Director Riley, that's kind of where the conversation turned. As you recall, people were, were like, I think it was Tyler Williamson who said, you know, are, can, can these allocations change? And I think we said, yeah, there's kind of two ways. One is we hold something back and the other would be we allocate it out and then we horse trade between communities, which my recollection from way back in time in the 90s, uh, General Manager Jim Kofer eventually had to be the adult in the room because none of the jurisdictions could could agree on the allocation of water back then, in, very, in a very similar situation as what you saw yesterday, which is that's unfair. That's unfair. Well, it's always unfair, um, and so he just you know by edict did the allocation uh, of the the available jurisdictional credit at the time. So. Where that conversation left me yesterday is we get the 75, we know internally kind of where the needs are based on the weighting that we talked about. And then we say, come forward, bring us a project. At a minimum, you're gonna get a guarantee of X. If you think you need more, um, let us know. Because even in Monterey's case, you know, it was, um, I think it was 18 to 23 acre feet or something like that. But that included Garden Road. Well, the last allocation that you saw in that chart gave them 20. And we still refilled our district reserve with five that we would have made available for Garden Road. So they won't likely need all that 20. Um, you know, if they if they brought a bunch of projects and they got to 12 or 13 or 14, there's probably some that they're not going to get to that could be reallocated. So we're going to have to. Uh, come up with a mechanism where we make clear that the water is available, but we don't allocate it all out right away. And we say, you know, as, as your needs arrive, um, let's review what we have and get in the queue. Um, 
but we're, we're going to have to kind of retain flexibility, I think. Uh, my last question, just to try to understand this, is the health and safety argument. Uh, that phrase, I think, is included in the um, uh, housing crisis bill. Uh, is that what we're going to base our argument on? Yes, that, that's, that's the nexus, which is um, the CDO envisioned that, uh, well, the words are the, the reductions can be waived due to health and safety concerns, but the letter in 2012 said that condition two um, may may be waived if there's health and safety reasons. So that's a Barbara Evoy's uh, letter, the four page letter that uh, interpreted two sentences. That that letter, <laughs> um, and then you know we're kind of because of the Housing Crisis Act that clearly made housing a health and safety issue that's the nexus that we think we can bring together where um, both the executive director and the deputy director would have some latitude we would expect them to be the um, the forcible land use agency here by saying hey we're only giving you this exemption if you use it for housing so we don't want to see uh, you know other things happen uh, but, you know, who, who knows? They may say no. Um, Mayor Peak did say that over a year ago, he had a conversation with the uh, executive director of uh, housing and community development, who pledged to go talk to the state water board and then came back and told Bill that the answer is no. And so uh, this could be a dead end, but we can't not try, given the fact that uh, housing is so paramount in every jurisdiction uh city councils right now so okay thank you uh director hoffman do you have any questions yes thanks chair edwards um is the volume adequate yeah it's good okay okay um again i get back to um where is this water apparently coming from um Palmer River is oversubscribed. The Seaside Basin is overdrafted. So we're, I guess, I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Um, we're asking for water that's already oversubscribed. Is that right? And so I'm that clarity could be sort of yep. me a little bit. Yeah, it is. It, it it definitely is. And what you have is a negotiated effective diversion limit that is higher than the legal. Uh, water right. And so it would, in effect, be saying you're over your legal water right. You're still over your legal water right today. And we're, we, the state, are recognizing that you're making progress to getting to your legal water right. But in the interim, we're going to let you uh, repurpose or put back into play a total of 75 acre feet of water that while within the effective diversion limit um, exists, but yeah, it's, it's still, we are in a uh, overdrafted position. And so it's paper water or it's uh, unlawful. It's, it's water in excess of their legal right, but below the uh, negotiated effective diversion limit. And they just for clear clarity, the effective diversion le levels that exist are they exist. They were, for lack of a better word, a um, acknowledgement by the state board that time would be needed to achieve the reduction. Right. And so to cut off immediately uh, would have been a tremendous hardship. So it was uh, an accommodation <clears throat> to allow continued. Uh, levels of use until a final um, water supply solution was achieved, right? Correct. So, so I just get back to we're asking for um, additional water on top of um, a, a gift that the water board gave um, in the interim 
years ago to allow us to continue to us, meaning the, the people live here and use water on the peninsula, um, to use water at the, at the existing levels that they did. And now we're saying, but we want more. Well, sort of. We've, what we're really saying is we've outperformed and and there's a specific prohibition on allowing um, an increase in use, but we're not asking for the effective diversion limit to be raised. So we're in effect saying, um, well, the holistic approach is they, they wrote a letter to us and they said, our concern, the reason condition to exist, our concern as a state is we don't want to see growth due to a change in zoning or a change in use at the expense of the river while you're still working your way down to your legal right. And what we're saying, and, and they said specifically in that 2012 letter, conditions that existed at the time of the CDO. What we're saying is that, that, and this is why we've had such difficult conversations with the state for six years, is we're now 3,600 acre feet below where we were the conditions on the ground in 2009. So if they were concerned about not increasing uses based on that 2009 level, one could cavalierly say, well, Great, then let's go back and we'll just repurpose 3,600 acre feet and we'd be at the same same place we were back then. So because we've outperformed, what we're saying is keep the effective diversion limit where it is. We're going to continue to work our way to the legal right, but don't unconditionally prohibit us from putting 75 acre feet of that 3,600 back into service because we have this other need health and safety need so it's um it's a little bit like what you're saying but it's a little bit not uh, I, because it's um the water exists physically there's just not a legal right to it except there is because they gave us this effective diversion limit that we're no longer even close to uh, in a matter of fact. And that gets then am I still on? Yeah. And so that gets, I think what's not being um, brought into the discussion here is the, um, the reason for the need for Calam to get down to their 3,300 acre feet is the negative environmental impacts to the Carmel river. And so, uh, as continued diversions above that 3,300 acre feet continue, the damage to the Carmel River and endangered species continue. So, um, to separate the two, I mean, the whole reason for the CDO is, 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 as I understand it, is that reason. Yeah, is that not correct? That is correct. And so, this is just a classic uh, case of. Uh, you know, the old fish versus humans kind of thing. You got one state department saying housing is an epic crisis and we don't need to uh, unreasonably prohibit the ability to develop new housing. And you've got another state agency who says, well, the conditions on the river are paramount and therefore, uh, we don't care about your housing issue. You know, I mean, that's that's basically what it is. It's two opposing public benefits. But to the extent that um, the health and safety concerns that the water board um, states in the order as being um, a condition or um, changing the CDO or, or allowing different things in the CDO, the state water boards um, uh, identified mission is um, related to water resources. Yep. And so that being said, um, 
isn't it um, safe to assume that when they use the term health and safety, it's to ensure that the at the time and when the order was written that the health and safety of the existing population on the peninsula would have adequate water supply. Um, and that is what they were referring to. Um, and there really wasn't any consideration for housing in the water board's um, inclusion of that language. If I may, yeah, um, yeah, say, uh, an, an agency is entitled to great weight in interpreting its own rules. Uh, in this instance, the uh, forgiveness that the state board may be granting would be an action by the state board delegated to its staff. So it will be able to determine what is meant by health and safety within the framework of the CDO and the framework of its own regulations. And if they don't find that uh, it meets the standard of health and safety, I would not expect them to grant the request. And if they choose to grant the request, then almost by definition, they will be, have be, uh, will be construing their own limitations. And I think that would have the force of law. And, and so my final uh, question is about, um, it just the perception of the water board as it relates to why our agency is, is putting forward the request as opposed to the coalition of the cities and the county um, taking the lead on this. It, it seems to me that that might be um, uh, a, a negative in, in the context that why aren't the cities the ones uh, taking the lead on this? Is And so is there a reason why the cities aren't taking the lead and that's not the approach that's being taken? Yeah, we talked a little bit about um you know, the League of Cities or, you know, to try, how, how do we pull them together? Um, you know, six different cities and unincorporated county and getting them to coordinate, uh, I believe is a challenge. I do know Monterey's already had some of their own uh, dialogue with the housing and community development people, um, but it, it would make sense. That's, and that's why I've stated this as being a coalition. Um, It came to us because we do the permitting and we do the water allocations to the jurisdictions and we are the ones who've been uh, <clears throat> dealing with the state water board over interpretation of the CDO as it relates to condition two. And this is all about an exemption or a waiver of condition two for this particular purpose. So, um, I don't think we can do it without the cities participating, which is why we're looking at a coalition. I don't think we can do it with the, without the state housing and community development people uh, making it a priority. So, um, but it's us because it's water and we understand the water board and we know who the staff are and, um, but it's, it's no easy lift either. And so just my last thing, Dave, is that, um, in your flow chart and about the outreach that that's identified. Um, why isn't that um, focused on getting that coalition of the cities um, and the county to to take the lead as opposed to other entities? It would seem to me that um, if they're the ones pushing for this, then that would have a greater um, uh, impact. It just seems like the the outreach that seems to be there is not not to get the cities on board collectively, but other um, organizations and groups. Yeah, but it is the city that it, uh, I'm I'm sorry, it's the district that are uh, is the party to the enforcement proceeding, and the the cities have not all appeared. And they are not parties. Yeah. That's all I had, Chair Edwards. Thank you. Uh, Chair. Uh, 
Go ahead, uh, Director Rao. Um, on the question of um, interpretation of, of um, Section 2, Paragraph 2, um, I'm still concerned that we do not have in our argument uh, the micromanaging uh, impact of that interpretation. And it seems to me that uh, the state ought to be sensitive to changing priorities, uh, successful conservation, uh, projects in motion, plus or minus in terms of meeting their schedule or not, um, uh, and then generally success at the local level, and yet uh, hindered by some lack of flexibility that's imposed by, this, the, by, the, by the condition too. And I'm just wondering if there's any, I mean, I would hope there is an argument that local, lo local, local areas need some flexibility, even with a CDO issued. And uh, the, the condition two is where we feel it the most. And, and, and I would just hope the argument can be made with a little flexibility in condition two. We can still meet all our objectives, meet uh, CDO objectives, meet uh, what the state water board wants. Maybe not exactly on the same schedule they want, uh, but we still shouldn't be uh, having our hands tied behind our back as we go day to day and uh, and issue to issue, where we need to respond uh, to our local conditions. Director Riley, this is this is the seventh year since we notified the state that condition two was not working well for the community. Um, Calam asked for an interpretation of condition two. That's when they got the four page interpretation of two sentences in April of 2012. And in March of 2013, we told the state that it wasn't working, that their definitions and our definitions were different and the uh, idea of trying to use a, a baseline based on billing was unfair and then we spent seven years talking about it with three different deputy directors of enforcement of water rights and several different staffers and this group the the group that they've got working on it um, was honestly making some very realistic progress in uh, learning what we as a district do, how we permit, what our definitions meant. And we were getting closer, but in the end, they could not move away from the micromanaging and the lack of flexibility. And that goes to things like they wanted to have control on a site by site basis, not the region as a whole service area. Um, so the idea of flexibility kind of uh, went by the wayside and we just agreed that we were heading to impasse. And um, that's, I'll be honest, they, what they really want is for us to get a permanent water supply done as soon as possible. So this whole issue goes away. And it's, it, it's not a bad position to take because we're heading in that direction, but yeah, we're just not getting the flexibility. So this is one where they recognize this issue's coming. They they know, and when I say they, I mean their uh, office of chief counsel as well as the deputy director of water rights. But um, do they really want to cut the, some slack for housing? The answer is no. Um, do they really want to see the unlawful diversions off the river? Yes. And so um, this is going to be a tough one for them to act on or to act on quickly. So, um, but the idea of flexibility, I don't know, Dave Laredo has been in many, many of those meetings with us. And I, I think we've just seen that the, the, the concept of giving a little um, isn't going to happen. I'm just reminded of the famous, uh, famous proverb. Um, the eighth time is the charm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, uh, uh, Dave. Uh, this Reno, who is that? Lapco. That's uh, 
through AMBAG. So through AMBAG, okay. So yeah, so basically the state sets housing targets and then the regional uh, associations assign the the target out to the to the various jurisdictions. Um, and so you know it's a regional housing needs allocation and it's a uh, a process this they've gone through the fifth cycle of it and they're presently in the sixth cycle so the new numbers will come out probably within a year um they've already moved some housing requirements around due to the constraints on water and uh, on the peninsula uh much to the, di the the disadvantage of uh, Marina, kind of giving Marina a higher number than perhaps they deserve because of constraints uh, down on the peninsula. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a regular process by which uh, the housing needs are identified and then allocated, and it's by four subcategories. So you've got your. Uh, you know, I'm going to get them wrong, but it's very affordable, affordable, moderate, and market rate. Um, oh, okay. Well, we used that report before, haven't we? Yeah, we've used it also for um, looking at water demand, water supply. Yeah, for population uh, forecasts for uh, demand uh, analysis. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I want to keep using it. It adds on to it. Uh, you said they saved about 3,600 acre feet? Uh, since 2009, yes. Okay, uh, could we make sure that's in the, in the report someplace? Yeah. So people would know. And Mr. Laredo, a question for you. If, if we get kicked back on this, can we take it another step? This is why I wanna do this, so we can move into another step to finally get this question on condition to answer, and I don't care if it's a judge, it needs to be done. I Let's hear you. Ahead, yes, but we have to exhaust our administrative remedies first. That's why we have to go to the state board in the first instance. Okay, that's why I wanna do on, on this. Now, um, I know we don't have approval to move this to the board, but I think it's on the agenda. It uh, is. Plato. Can we, do we need committee approval to move this to the agenda or can the chair give that permission? Uh, the, the general manager can as well. Okay, yeah, it's, yeah it, based on our discussion earlier in the week, uh, Director Edwards, it's on the agenda for the, the board for approving uh, moving to the next stage. Yeah, and, and the next stage is going outside the district, right? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have uh, JEA Associates uh, set up some uh, meetings with the housing and community development people, uh, virtual meetings, uh, and see if we can't uh, drum up their support. There are also, uh, there's strong uh, housing advocates uh, on the, uh, both the assembly and Senate committees. Um, and so we're gonna try to circle those folks up to have them better understand the dilemma we're in here with the, the CDO. It's not a typical problem throughout the state. And then once they've got that understanding and then can uh, converse at a fairly high level with state water board people, uh, that, that's where we wanna get them to. Okay, I, I would like y'all to make sure we get the right, uh, either adopt, approve, accept on this. We ran that problem with, uh, with the water supply report. So I wanna make sure we got the right one on that and bringing it to the uh, board. Uh, Director Hoffman, I know you got that mic open. Yeah, I just, um, I, I got an email, I think Dave and Arvin got it, that John Tilly does wanna make a comment and just, I don't know what the technical difficulties are, but he's on and, and still requests um, that his public comment be um, allowed. And yeah. I don't know if Arlene has been uh, able to uh, correct the technical issues that we had problems with, I guess, earlier. Yeah, we, okay. also, yeah, we also have a hand up from uh, Andy Flower at City of Monterey. Okay, uh, I'm gonna close director comments off right now and open it up to the public. Give them three minutes.
It will take me just a moment to uh, get the list up. Just a moment, please. Uh, Ms. Flower, please present your comment. Hello, my name is Andy Flower, Principal Planner at the City of Monterey. And I'd like to express on behalf of the city our gratitude for the solidarity that the Water Demand Committee and the Water District is um, that, that you have solidarity with us, with our intention to be a front runner for providing affordable housing for the region. Thank you for that. We continue to receive forward movement with many developments in several areas of our city beyond Garden Road. So I want to let you know in the trenches as a planner, mm -hmm. reviewing documents that are coming in and intentions by developers that we very well could use quite a bit of the water that would be allocated to us, if not all. Um, moving forward with, with numerous um, designs. Uh, and, and these designers are galvanized by, by your solidarity. So thank you again. And I would uh, just lastly just urge the conversation with State Water Resources Control Board to include a, uh, consideration for donation of credits from property owners to the city for municipal allocation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Tilly, well, please present your comment. Thank you, Arlene. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, you're just fine. Okay, good. So I was at the State Water Resources Control Board. Dave, you were there. George, you were there when the extension was granted. And we all remember at the end of it, the, the, the person leading the meeting from the control board saying directly to us, I can't believe we're doing this again. This is not what I want to do. Do not ever come back here and ask for an extension of the CDO. You guys remember that, right? Yeah. Well, here we go. Here we go, and we're doing it. And I find it really difficult to fathom how, on one hand, we could be pursuing this uh, CDO uh, extension, uh, forgiveness of 75 acre feet, and on the other hand, be turning down the approach for the DSAW project when we know that Monterey One Water is having the struggles it's, happening, it's having. And when you look at the supply committee report, it's going to be used to ask for this extension. You know, I'll tell you it's not just health and safety that's uh, uh, the concern over there at the water control board there's a due diligence has been exercised by the petitioner is important and the failure to comply with previous time requirements has been occasioned by obstacles which cannot be reasonably avoided um, and that satisfactory progress will be made if the time extension is granted furthermore there has to be a hydrological analysis that says that this will that this will not result in a decrease in stream flow when I look at the projects that are being put forth to, to ask for 75 acre feet off of right number B, right B, everything I'm seeing is rainfall dependent. Everything I'm seeing is, is taking more water off of the river, drilling more wells, and relying upon ASR. And I'll tell you, the one thing that really galls me is the idea that you're acknowledging that there has to be a 10 year average water production rainfall number used instead of the numbers that were used in, in the in the demand and supply report of, of the district. For me, it really points out that the district's insincerity when they were putting together the demand and supply report in terms of having it dovetail with what was going on previously, historically at the CPUC and at the Water Control Board. You know, it's it's hard to watch it happen that the pieces don't fit together. And when the more you watch, the more you see that the pieces don't fit together. And, you know, if, if we're going to rely upon the State Water Resources Control Board to give us more water, the district is just simply not doing its job. The mission of the district is to promote and provide for a long-term sustainable water supply and protect the water resources. That is not happening when you're going to the, to, the, to the control board and saying, please give us more water off the Carmel River. Come on, guys. Make the desal plant part of what we're talking about here, and let's find out if we can put together something that works for this community. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Kim Cole, please present your comment. 
Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Kim Cole. I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Monterey. I wanted to share with the group that affordable housing continues to dominate our city council discussions. And our city council just released a request for proposal. They've offered up four city-owned sites for 100% affordable housing developments. Um, they include two parking lots in our downtown, the area behind our city hall, as well as our harbor maintenance yard in our downtown area. We've asked for proposals um, that um, show us the maximum number of affordable housing units that you could provide on that site. So I just wanted to share with you that our city council is continuing to take dramatic, step for, dramatic steps forward to pursue affordable housing due to the health and safety crisis um, in the state of California, as well as our region. And we support very much this effort to um, exhaust the discussion with the State Water Resources Control Board regarding condition number two. If we are going to build housing, we have to be able to um, work with condition two. Thank you very much for all of your efforts. Thank you. Um, Luke, please present your comment. Uh, Luke Coletti, resident of Pacific Grove. Um, I'm not going to offer a lot of commentary on uh, condition two or the scheme that's been discussed here today, but I, I do have a question, and that is basically who's going to be the gatekeeper for this uh, water that's being uh, proposed to be allocated to the different jurisdictions? And how will this gatekeeper decide what's a, uh, you know, what's a affordable housing project and only an affordable housing project and what's not? Someone's going to have to make a land use decision. Uh, and I know you guys say you're not a land use agency, but I guess you're willing to dip your toe in the pool on this one. Someone's going to have to decide what's a worthy project or not for this water, because you are definitely selling this as an, as water for affordable housing and affordable housing only. So that takes me to kind of my next point, which is you're asking basically for an exception to condition two. You can build affordable housing now. No one has the water to do it other than Pacific Grove and, you know, through their entitlement, through the through their uh, local water project. But you're asking for an exception of, to condition two. You're asking for an allocation based on paper water. And you're saying it's going to be for affordable housing only. My suspicion, my question is once you open up condition two to allow water to be created, you know, through fiat basically for affordable housing, how will condition two then apply to other projects that are not quote unquote affordable housing, say luxury condos or, or whatever? So once you get, you know, it's once you get this exception to condition two, how will it apply housing, but not anything else? And uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chair Edwards, I see no other raised hands. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to the board. Any other comments from the board before we move on? Director Hoffman, any more comments? No, I'm good. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Director Riley, any more comments? Uh, no, no more comments. All right. Thank you. Uh, General Manager, can you answer those any of those questions that the <clears throat> last caller asked for him, if you all can? You or Mr. Laredo? Yeah, so I think earlier I, I said that in order for this to be um, productive and, and meaningful, we would need, with the permission to do so, a we'd need the state water board to say that they're only doing this for projects that are in support of affordable housing. The local jurisdictions will have to make those decisions themselves 
you will certainly see projects that are only 20% or 25% affordable brought forward, which means that there's market rate housing in them. But that may be a priority of that particular city. Um, you may see a mixed use project where there's affordable units uh, above retail. And if that fits what the jurisdiction uh, believes meets their affordable housing needs, then that's going to be part of it. So it's very, it'll be very challenging to uh, to pigeonhole it to just uh, you know 100% affordable residential only projects because those are the very hardest ones to get built. Uh, no incentive for developers, no profit. So unless you've got a a foundation or uh, you know a, a private donor or somebody uh, with deep pockets, none of which the cities will have in a post COVID-19 uh, world. You know, the, the economy's really just been trashed for, for all the cities. They're not gonna be in a position to build 100% affordable on their own. So we'll leave my, it to the- My, my, uh, my assumption is that the state board's just not gonna give us a blank check. And the right. state board, if it chooses to act positively on the request, will impose a myriad of conditions upon that, and my sense is, is that they will fill that void and get, let us know what the parameters are on definition of affordable housing and whether or not it includes anything else, mixed use or market rate or what percentage. Uh, I can't imagine the state board would just say, oh yeah, here's a slug of water, you interpret how to use it. Hey, Mr. Laredo, uh, any suggested items to be placed on future agendas? Uh, <clears throat> Director Hoffman? I'll just uh, continue to um, ask about progress regarding um, getting our station up in Carmel Valley for um, monitoring um, solar yeah, boosters and stuff. Yeah, the two. Um... You've raised that the SIMA station as well as the non Calam pumpers. They're still on the execution list. Um, we actually, you know, I took a tour out at Rancho Cañada again, and I'm I'm convinced that there's a nice little spot for it. Um, but I've got to I've got to spend some time with Rafael Pan and figure out what their long term plans are for the okay. SIMA station. And Stephanie's got on her to do list a couple of tasks related to the non calam pumpers. Okay, we'll put that on the next agenda if y'all get an update or anything. Director Raleigh, you got anything? Nothing, nothing new, thanks. Okay, in that case, I'll call the meeting to adjourn. Thank you. Have a safe weekend.